William Hill Vegas sponsors Frampton versus Quig on Sky Sports Box Office. Radio Raheem here with a million dollar Anthony Crawler. Listen, man, I've watched you go around to this crowd and everybody. You maybe got more fans here than either one of the fighters there on Saturday night. We, I mean, first of all, talk to me about your history here in Manchester. Like, how is it that the fans uh, feel so much attachment to you? Um, I'm just blessed to have great support from Manchester, being a Manchester lad. Each time I fight, they turn out. But um, obviously, Saturday's about these two boys, um, Scott and Carl. But yeah, no, listen, it's, it's great to see them and I'm thankful for all the support they do all the time. And it's, it's listen, if someone's wants a pitch where you take that picture, listen, soon in a few years' time and it's all done, it'll all stop. That's what I've always been told. Hey, listen, Saturday night is a big night for Manchester. I mean, it's at the Manchester Arena where many big things have gone down for the locals here. You've got, you know, Ricky Hatton won his yeah, title yeah, there. Yeah. You won your title there. And then yeah. your, your mate Scott Quigg is going in to yeah. really come into his own this Saturday night. Yeah. How involved have you been in camp? And uh, have you given him any pointers or even any sparring? I mean, we've not sparred for, for this fight because stylistically, me and Carl will be very different as well as the size issue. But... Um, Scott, since Scott's a good mate of mine, and since when Scott fights, I'd, I'd get more nervous for his fights than what I would for mine. You know, he's um, everything Scott Quigg gets out of boxing he deserves. He's the hardest working lad I've ever worked alongside, and um, he's in the shape of his career for Saturday. He's in um, the shape of his career, sort of the form of his career, and it's going to be great. Two, two world champions going at it, both at the peak. In Manchester as well, it's another great night for British boxing. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm going to have one of the best seats in the house, passing up, carrying the bucket for Scott. Hey, there, you see that? There's some humility right there. You're willing to yeah. carry that bucket to be nah, in the corner. You're dead right. Now, when it comes to the spotlight, you've overcome your challenges. A spotlight like this for Quig, maybe it's his first time. Has he, have you had any conversation with him about how to keep his head and stay focused? No, well, I think Scott. One thing Scott always says is, like I was saying earlier, he trains harder than anyone I've ever met, never mind trained alongside. But um, what it is is that Scott walks to that ring knowing that no stones left and unturned. He can walk to that ring knowing it's the very best Scott Quick that's getting in that night. And that's what I'll do Saturday. He's going to go out there and enjoy it. He's put all the hard work in, all the hard work's done now. He's not going to get any fitter or stronger this next few days. So it's just a matter of now resting up, staying sharp. And um, he knows once that walk, he'll know how to handle that. He'll know how to handle that crowd. He's worked too hard to sort of let a crowd get to him. You know, turning the spotlight towards you and your career, you're the WBA champion at 140 pounds. Well, this is William Hill. 135. One, one, one three five. 145. 35. 35. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah I guess, okay. I so, <laughs> not yet. Yeah. But there, I kind of gave away where I'm going. Yeah, when uh, this this goes out, this is uh, William Hill, Vegas. Yeah. So, this is going to both sides of the pond. And those on the other side may not know your name as well. Yeah. How do you introduce yourself to the American fans? And I was going to ask, do you have yeah. to step up maybe to 140 to, to challenge there? Or wh what's the prospects for you? I mean, at the minute, I do 135 fine. And, um, I don't see any need to step up unless a huge fight come and an offer come in that I couldn't turn down. But it's listen, there's there's great fights here, great crowd here every time I fight in Manchester. But there's other champions um, who are well known in Manchester, uh, well known sorry over in America. And listen, if I could get him on a away trip for all the fans over to Vegas. Yeah. It's the Vegas, New York, wherever, we'd take it. Is there anybody that you got your eye on? Like when you're over here and you're seeing these guys on the telly in America saying, yeah, I can, I can best that guy, I can beat that guy. There's, listen, there's no one in particular. I just want the big fights and whoever, maybe another champion over there, that's a fight I'd happily take. Those, for those in America who are just being introduced to you, maybe for the first time here in this interview, they don't know uh, your story. Can you tell me, like, introduce yourself by telling me about the whole incident that happened, like, you know, a couple yeah, years yeah. back and how you've gotten here. Like, this is amazing that you're even here right now like this. Yeah, no, um, just over, well, it was in December 2014. Um, I was due to fight for my first world title about four weeks later, and I was involved in an incident with some burglars, and I ended up with a fractured skull. A concrete slab went over my head, fractured skull, broken ankle in a few places. So it was um, it was a long road back, but... Well, let me stop you there, because yeah. you're being modest. Yeah. The way I hear this story is uh, burglars broke into your neighbor's home, yeah, not yeah. even your home. No, no. You caught wind of it. You went and chased down criminals in the street, already being a professional fighter, huge fight like, ahead of you. 
Yeah. And uh, one guy held you, the other guy hit you with a slab of concrete, no. something like this? Uh, no, nah, one guy, I'd, I'd caught them, I'd caught them, and he uh, didn't hold me, I would have never let him away. <laughs> uh, I was going to walk one of them back, then on the blind side, the slab come over my head. And when cracked I, your skull? Walk back with him, and, yeah, cracked my skull, fractured my skull. And so, um, obviously nearly an end to the boxing career, but I was lucky enough, fortunate enough, to get the all clear to box again. And... Um, yeah, that would have ended most people's secretarial yeah, careers, yeah, much course, less boxing. Yeah. Yeah. And then six months later, you're in the gym, you're, you're, you're pursuing your goals again. How did you find the inner strength? How did you find the mental strength to overcome something like that when it would have been enough for anybody else to quit? You just know you get a second chance. You've got to take, not everyone gets a first chance, so I got a second chance to, um, to go again. And I, I take nothing for granted. I worked hard and I made sure that I was going to come back stronger than ever and I feel that's what I've done. Well, I did do that to win a world title. <laughs> so um, it was just about remaining positive and making sure I bounce back. Did that experience change your life at all? Like, you know, yeah, about, were you a different yeah. guy before? How were you a different yeah, guy it's after? Just like, it's just taking nothing for granted. Nothing for granted. I've got a little boy at home and a family and you come so close, close to losing it all and you realize how much you love boxing. So the things that you'd moan about in the past, I no longer moan about them now. Hmm. Radio Raheem with Anthony, million dollar crawler. You know, it's a pleasure to talk to you, a pleasure to meet Love you, man. To Hopefully on the other side of the pond, Thank they'll you, introduce yeah. you and uh, know you soon. I hope so. Don't miss the fight. Call Frampton, Scott Quigg, Manchester Arena this Saturday night. This guy's going to be carrying a spit bucket and uh, the war is going to be in the ring. Don't miss it. William Hill Vegas sponsors Frampton versus Quigg on Sky Sports Box Office.